Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Inspectors right here on twitch.tv slash Gilding Light. Yay! <laughs> All right. Before we get around to meeting our wonderful players today, as some announcements first. Thank you, Gilding Light and Satine, for the space. Uh, thank you, D&D &D and Beyond, for our giveaway today, which will be Candlekeep Mysteries. And that will be started sometime during the episode, and the, we'll draw also sometime during the episode. So stick around, find out if you win, and have your Twitch whispers open so I can get in contact with you. That would be great. And also, thank you to Sirenscape for all the wonderful sounds that you will hear tonight. Uh, you can add these sounds and more to your game when you download the Sirenscape desktop or mobile app. The app is free and comes with 20 sound sets that are included to get you started. You don't even need to register. Go to Sirenscape.com to find out more. That's S Y S Y R I N S C A P E dot com. All right. Now, on to the inspectors. Let's introduce our cast, starting with Crystal. Hello, people. My name is Crystal Fear. You can find me at Crystal underscore Fear on Twitter and at Crystal Fear pretty much everywhere else. I am playing Sarissa Shiog, the changeling sorceress. And Lori? Hi, everybody. My name is Lori, a.k.a. Calamity Jade, and I am playing Molly O'Shaughnessy. She is a human rogue. And Vera? Hello, I am Vera from Vera Says Dragons just about everywhere on the internet, and I play Kane Ekaros, the Drow Paladin. All right, and uh, Adam is away for a couple weeks, so we miss him and look forward to his return. When he does, yay! But follow him at Adamus Lamas on all the things. And I am DC Lasser. I will be your DM today, and... Yeah, you can pretty much find me everywhere under that. So, okay, surprise recap time. Anyone ready to do one? Well, I could if no one else wants to. I could try. Oh, we're going to fight for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we had our escape from the... Uh, we had our escape from the Shadowfell after defeating the Shadow Dragon and attempting to save... Um, the daughter of the uh, I'm blanking on her name S Laurel Silverhand? Silverhand that's it Laurel Silverhand and attempting to save her um, and then we had a bit of a debrief with her mother in which she kind of called us out for the fact that you know we murdered a crime lord and took over his gang but you know it was in the name of good so we, we got away with it kind of um, had a dinner party went back to our place um, and kind of got back to being ourselves and uh, settling into being the inspectors with a bit of newfound notoriety that made some of us a little uncomfortable, but oh well. Um, and then Lucian left us several jobs on the table, and we selected the one to help him unlock a memory of his mother's. So we took, an, we took a trip to a home for retired adventurers, found out that it was really cool and kind of just more like an outdoorsy club than like a retirement home, which is awesome. And then found Lucian and his mother, found out why he needs the key and what it's for, for some sort of safe, for some sort of fairly family heirloom. And with a magical spell, we are now inside the museum of his mother's mind. I'm pretty sure that's everything. Yeah. yeah. That was everything. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, we're going to start inspiration for whoever does the recap. So, Vera, inspiration. Nice. Oh, I should probably have my character sheet open. <laughs> and just help. wing it. Um, no. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> you are uh, in definitely a museum setting. Uh, wooden floors. There is a lot of fancy people around you, all dressed up. And there are paintings on the walls. Some canvases are completely blank. Some just have pieces. It's almost like the paint on th these paintings has chipped away on some of them. Some of them are complete. And in front of you is 
the person you're pretty sure is just a younger version of Lucian's mother, Elsa. And uh, he looks to, uh, amongst the crowd and all of you. Welcome to the Elsa Monroe wing of this museum. <laughs> it, my uh, husband, Fred, he painted all of these five years, and we, well, I miss him, but uh, I'm glad we can show these off now. I think they're his best work, even though they were sort of private, so I was encouraged to donate them. The one you see before me was uh, taken inspiration from a performance I gave in Candlekeep. And uh, she kind of moves out of the way, and behind her is this painting, and is in a uh, ballerina gown, and it's, it's beautiful. Shoes, mm -hmm. she's spinning in the air. There's the candle keep, it's just like a library around her, and pages swirl about her, and the pages, and it looks like the pages are matching her movement, even in a painting. Oh. And I think this this was probably the best over over the five year period we did this project. Me the dancer, him the painter. I can imagine better. So thank you all for coming. If you have any questions, please. And uh, you ha you hear a bunch of shouts, Mrs. Monroe, Mrs. Monroe, and. Uh, yes. You know her last name should be Tinsdale Forthright. Mm -hmm. But. And she's answering questions, and you're sort of at a social gathering. I, I don't know what to do at an art gallery opening, which this appears to be. And as, no as you idea. look about, you notice that all your clothing is not your own, but you're looking really good. Suit or a dress, whichever you prefer, or pants. I'm in pink! Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. That moment when the only shirt that you can find plays into the story. That's amazing. <laughs> Victory. <laughs> Victory. And uh, as you're talking amongst yourselves and there's sort of mumbling going on around you, you notice that some of the other paintings, paint sort of chips off and floats down to the ground, vanishing as it does mm. very slowly on some. I get the feeling that time is critical here. Um, I have a question, DC, about all the other people present. Mm -hmm. Do they all have complete faces, or are some of them like blanked out, like the paintings are? Like, are these actual physical full people? Uh, some of them, yeah. Some of them parts are just not there. Details here mm. and there. The jacket's gone. Maybe it's just face. Okay. Not there, and it's not that they're faceless. It's just not there. Okay, kind of like, like if it was blurred or something. Like the details are just not fine. Yes. Okay. All right, this is this is great. Uh, well, our best bet is to. Well, two thoughts. I'd like to find any other paintings that are completely together, like her dancing, is because those might be the strongest memory links, mm -hmm. and also kind of keep tabs on her and her conversation as she flits about. All right. Uh, she's just answering questions, uh, talking about to s some people who seem to be art critics, talking about her husband's technique, what she remembers of it, mm -hmm. uh, and what she can explain because she wasn't the painter, but, you know, she picked up some things along the way. And about her career, uh, the other mm -hmm. paintings that are strongest seem to involve a theater of some sort. There's a stage. There's She's in everything that 
you can see involves her, or at least pieces of her if it has if they haven't flaked off okay. yet and a dancing and uh there are quite a few in this theater okay and i need everyone to make an intelligent saving throw oh yes oh yes i forgot oh, about no. this part i forgot about that part oh, oh no. fun yeah oh wait it's intelligence not wisdom okay i might not be i might not be doomed yeah, no, I'm duped. No, I'm not. you have inspiration though. I do, do have inspiration. I'm gonna use that because I just rolled a f f seven. Ouch! Use oh. it. You gonna use that inspiration. <laughs> that is much better. Woo. Okay, okay, that's a twenty-two. Nice. Remember, right. everyone gets a plus three on saves when they're around me. By the way. Awesome. Cool. Okay, so in that case, I got a dirty twenty. All right. Well, Molly? Total of 18 for Molly with 18. the boost from Kane. You start to feel like you belong here, that, yeah, you're here to interview this person in front of you, and then you shake off that feeling, that memory, oh. and you're centered in yourselves. Better hurry. <laughs> as long as you stay close to me, I can still help to, like, boost your defenses against magical effects. It's just you need to be within like 10 feet. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Buddy system. Yes. Very, very good idea. Yes. Uh, well, we shouldn't waste any time. We could try to isolate her from whatever these figures are. Yeah. I can try to go fetch her. I don't know if that will work. Fetching her? I feel like that might make it... Worse. Oh, goodness gracious. We're in somebody's mind. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I feel like that'll just make it worse. Like, maybe you touching her would drag you deeper into the spell or into her mind. Mm. What if what? we tried touching the paintings? That might help. That... And I could perhaps try and use a divine sense. I don't know if that would work in someone's brain, but maybe it would give a clue. Hmm. Hmm. Or it could do absolutely nothing, but doesn't really hurt me to try. Yeah. Okay, I'm... give that a whirl. All right. All right. Uh, tell me what you're attempting to do with Divine Sense in this moment. Um, I guess I'm just looking for... It specifically says that I can... I'm looking for detecting good and evil. I can sense anything affected by the hollow spell or know the location of any celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet that's not behind total cover. So I guess I'm just trying to sense if there's anything that feels more powerfully good than anything else. If there's anything that feels like it needs to be paid attention to. You get the... And we'll go a little outside the bounds of the spell here. Uh, you get the sense that there's nothing evil here. All these are... All the paintings are pleasant... Mm -hmm. uh, there are some which seem to be, shall we say, more good than others, like they're better memories. And other than the Candlekeep one, uh, seems to be the ones involving the theater. Mm -hmm. So I will share that with the group. Okay. Mm -hmm. <sighs> And I, I remember Rox had like a flute, and Sarissa said you sing. We have no other instruments. Is that right? Mm, Kane had an instrument. Hang on. I have a flute. You have a flute. Okay. I have a flute. Cause maybe I could 
invite her to dance because it is a gala after all. If you perform, mm -hmm. we could dance and then try to talk to her and see if it triggers anything. Because that's not the right name. Mrs. Monroe is, I mean, it, we don't know. Well, Tinsdale Forthright, that should be both of her names, right? How many names do you people, what is the maximum you can have? Could you be a Monroe than I mean, a Tinsdale Forthright? Eight. eight. That is many. That is I have too eight. many. That is too many. I technically I only have that. one, but I have eight. Eight. One day, you may write them down for me, so I may remember. I will write them down for you one day when I don't think that I'm going to be hunted down by the demons of my past. Although, you know, I'm pretty sure that they wouldn't get it from you, so I'll write it down for you when we're not in here. But anyway, <laughs> um, should I just go try and start playing the flute randomly i could walk up to her i i actually assume that molly is in some sort of like lady cut tux and the cummerbund is really more like her, her leather straps that she would have almost like her gear but it's 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 only the cummerbund section mm -hmm. so it still looks sort of fancy but is actually not of a un, uh, conventional material all right um so i will make my way over to Elsa, and see if I can uh, politely interrupt from the throng. Uh, you grab her attention. What do you say to her? Yeah. Forgive me for interrupting. I wanted to speak with you more about your husband's art, but then I was so caught up with the beauty and the movement that I thought, what better way to honor him and you than to participate in a dance as sort of like a more formal declaration of art in this space. And and my associates here, uh, we've also prepared something very special for you. Okay. Uh, give me a persuasion check. Okay. Uh, I said the skill I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so terrible. 15 plus, uh, what is the horrible negative one? Okay, 14. 14. <laughs> yeah. All right. As she considers, she's like, you know, been a year since I've danced. Maybe if somebody had some music. No, oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Kane will raise the flute and start to play a melody that is quick and light but somehow still somber to try and keep to the mood of what this is all right make a uh, performance check okay okay yes. okay my performance bonus is actually not bad at all so can, let's pray can i help oh, oh. by like singing along yes yeah, so you can roll with advantage uh, okay Natural 20! All right. <laughs> it was going to be a dirty 20, and then with the advantage, natural 20. Nice. Yay! All right, Lori, make a performance check as well okay. as you're dancing with now a professional dancer, and she's leading you in this, and let's see how well you keep up. Okay. Um, yeah. Do I get advantage because of the music or just straight? I'm willing to do just straight. I'm just curious. Just straight. All right. Here we go. I believe in you. Ooh, 19 minus 1, 18. 18. All right. You manage to keep up pace. And your study of movements and, you know, people milling about has served you well, and you can kind of trace the steps, and you eventually get into a rhythm with her, and you start dancing. And hmm. as you begin this dance, it goes on, and then everything around you kind of swirls about. Oh, the, the crowd sort of vanishes like a painting just going away and everything just sort of becomes a swirl around you Ooh. and then goes into darkness and it's just the two of you. Oh, dancing. no. <laughs> and then fully all of you come back into focus. Hmm. You're in a theater. There are... You are no longer dancing. In front of you are a couple seats and 
what you recognize as the back of Elsa's head, and next oh. to her is a, a gentleman, uh, white hair, all hmm. from at least as much as you can tell from his seated position. And you are a couple rows back, all of you, also seated. And she looks oh. over at her, at this man. So, how long do we have? He replies, well, I, I don't know. But it's maybe a year, maybe a few months. We're lucky either way. Been a while building all this. He looks around, kind of admiring the stage and the curtains and the seats. Even just the ramp up and down seems to be magnificent in this moment. Is I well one more time then? Is I your theater. And uh they uh both rise and they go up up on stage and they begin to dance. Uh oh. And even though you can probably guess that this is Fred and he's a painter, he's keeping up rather well. And they start these very intricate maneuvers as they're going on, as they twirl about and leap and uh, just dance around each other. What would you like to do? Um, I feel like watching them move, Molly gets very fascinated and is just like studying it, like memorizing how they move and how they're doing that, especially since it's using like acrobatics and athleticism. It's very interesting to her. It's like picking at the patterns. All right. And you watch this, and this is beautiful. This might be the most beautiful private performance you ever get to see. Mm. And it's full on, and you, you just hear music as if it's coming from nowhere. Fill the room. Mm. And they go, and they keep going. And uh, then suddenly... You're back in the museum. You're dancing with her again, Molly. Mm -hmm. As soon as they finish this dance on the stage, and then you glide with her and finish. Uh, I will get yeah, bow and like take her gloved hand and just kind of like kiss it respectfully. Uh, thank you for the dance. Uh, if you have more time to speak, I am sure we would both all appreciate time with you. You are an excellent dancer. Oh, you know what? That was the best dance I've had in a while. So, sure. Let's go over here. And she seems to call someone up to start answering questions and feeling them for her. Hmm. And uh, she walks over where you want to go. I'll lead her by the arm very formally over to you, Sarissa and Kane, and, and reintroduce them. Hey. Oh, all of us. Hello. Thank you so much for coming. Um, Delighted to see you all. And it seems like she's about nice to ask your names, you. and you all need to make an intelligence saving throw again. Oh, oh boy. Um, <laughs> Remember <laughs> your plus threes. I'm so glad you came over. <laughs> oh, thank God. Oh. Wait, do I also get 30, 20 again? Awesome. 21. Okay. 25. All right. Perfect. Um, 
madam, we actually have a question for you, uh, if you would not mind. Uh, of course. Why are they calling you Miss Monroe? That, we know you under a different name. I, I've been married for more than 10 years. Uh, I don't... I have had no other name. Are you sure? Because we know you as Elsa Tinsdale... Forthright. Forthright. I'm sorry, I don't know who that is. It's you. And your son, Lucian. Oh, I, I don't have any children. I, th I think you do. I think you need to remember. Mm. I would like uh, to... Hang on. There's a thing I can do. I'm positive that there's a thing I can do. Okay. Eh. There was a reason that I unprepared bless, and it was because I was preparing um, zone of truth. Okay, before you do that, so give me a medicine oh. check. A medicine check. Yep. Okay. Um, 19? 19, wow. okay. And, uh, give me an insight check as well. With advantage, because you rolled well on the medicine check. Oh boy, insight. Mm-hmm. Um, not as good, 14? 14, okay. This is a younger version of the person you know. You know this is a memory of this person. Mm -hmm. This could very well be just not the person you need to speak to, or perhaps it's exactly who you need to speak to, and this particular memory is not that far ahead in time, perhaps. Perhaps mm -hmm. it's a later event where that she becomes Kane's a tense suspicion, so she Kane's just trying to, like, jog the memory into more of reality, I guess, is what they're attempting to do by mentioning the things that have happened since this. Yeah, uh, you continue your inquiry, and she does not know who, who you are talking of. Okay, so I will not cast Zone of Truth. Um... She does not even recognize that family name. Are we not in Waterdeep? Do we know where we are? Uh, roll me a history check. Let's see if you've heard of this museum. Okay. Because she mentioned a name of the museum, and mm -hmm. which I don't Kane have a specific name for yet. So guess what? You roll high enough, you can name it. <laughs> uh, okay. This is what I've always wanted. Um, a total of 14. 14. Okay, good enough, uh, because you have been in Waterdeep for quite a while. Uh, yes, you, you pretty much know where this museum is in Waterdeep. Okay. And the Tinsdale Forthrights own, like, a huge chunk of town, so they've been in Waterdeep a long time. Yes. Okay. So maybe she's currently on Monroe, but... Surely then you would know the Tinsdales or the Fortlights. Is this a family your, your family is familiar with? Obviously, you're very well to do. Uh, she goes, oh, uh, I suppose I've seen a few of the family at some of my dances. I get introduced to a lot of people. You, now that mm. you say it, it does sound like uh, maybe I've met a few and still forthrights in passing. And they are quite well off, even more so than, dare say, everybody here. <laughs> that is very true. Um, I'm sure you've also you've seen the manor, not very famous. Uh, and can I kind of describe it 
like I, I'm assuming a family famous like that, I, I would know what their place looks like. Wait, uh, oh, you're, you're describing the Tinsdale Fourth Right okay. Estate. Estate. Uh, yeah, yeah. She's you, you describe it, and she's definitely ridden by there in a, in a carriage. And... Hmm. If I could, while I'm describing it, I'd like to change like a detail about the house that's very distinctive, and just see if it. Like triggers, like you know, if it was the color of the door, if it's always had a famous blue door, I describe it as red. Like just something that's. I'm just trying to see if I can trigger anything about it. Just sort of talking about how beautiful it is, you know, like stately way and manner, and oh, don't you love the horse statue out front? But really, it's like a hippogriff or something like that. It's just to make a big distinction. Yeah, uh, you, you bring up a couple points like that, and she looks at you quizzically, like perhaps you're misremembering something. <laughs> mm-hmm. She's like. She doesn't mention it, and you, you you can tell as you're good at reading people. Uh, she's being polite about the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I just I just wish I could remember what that other thing was. It oh, I just love it so much, but you know, just because I think of it, no. Uh, um, but you know who would probably know is um, we don't know his name, do we? Uh, Lucian's father, so oh. Mister Tinsdale. Great. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't in the case file you, nope. no one asked oh, nobody wow. asked <laughs> well I guess I don't know in general darn it but, yeah. Kane would like to try and slip away a little bit and go deeper into the museum okay try and see if there's anything that still relates to Elsa but that looks different than the things that they've already seen while Molly is talking and uh, Kane will kind of tug Sarissa along. You walk for a bit and there's some paintings. Again, some canvas is blank. Some are still falling to little pieces. And as you walk, suddenly it becomes very dark. And there's nothing around you. And you continue walking. And you kind of screen scroll. You loop back to the other side of the museum. And you approach from the opposite side you were just at. How did we... uh, It's like we're trapped in this section. Apparently... This isn't good. I don't know what to do from this point. I We tried to jog her memory, and that didn't work. We tried dancing, and that didn't work. I don't exactly want to ruin the paintings, because I feel like that would actually damage the memories that she possesses. Agreed. Oh, dear. <laughs> Thank you, Fenny. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, we have a wild magic surge. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, and thank you for reminding me that that's one of the rewards, too. Um, <laughs> so while I pull up the chart, who wants to roll the wild magic surge? I will. Okay. So roll me that percentile. That is 72. 72. Mm. Okay. I'm going to modify this a little bit. Uh, (laughs) So, Sarissa, Uh you feel something happen. You're not sure what there's just something different and it Mm. seems to be around you not around anyone else but you get like this little tingle that something happened but no one sees anything different you don't see anything different you don't look different i was just gonna say i'm going to like examine and make sure that i'm not 
yep, I don't you're, know, you're suddenly still have in a the, tail or something. No, you're still in the uh, uh, whatever formal dress you were in when you came into the memory, and uh, yeah. But are uh, you all right? You're Scarissa? you're aware of something that happened. Uh, there was a magical effect, but no idea what it is, what it did, and doesn't seem to be doing anything right now. Cool. Hmm. I am now terrified. Um, <laughs> I I don't know. I just feel a bit strange. Um, strange like you're starting to lose yourself in the memory or strange like things are not right no it just um there was a i don't know a bit of magic something i can't really tell what it was though well i kane's gonna just take sarissa's hand and go i'm going to hold on to you so that we don't lose one another in this memory box and hopefully the weird feeling goes away i think that's a wonderful idea okay um what if we look behind the paintings there's a wall never mind i was kind of hoping there would be a door hmm. or maybe something on the back of a painting Can we, like, subtly, when no one's looking, like, lift a painting and look at the back of the canvas? Uh, as you try to do this, the whole place shakes a little. Oh. Okay. We don't we do don't, that. Like, we, don't, we, we don't do that. Mm -mm. Oh, dear. All right. Molly, what are you discussing with Elsa currently. Yeah, I think she's just basically dancing around the subject of uh, family and the importance of connections. And I guess she'll sort of, because she mentioned it's been five years since her husband, Fred, mm -hmm. sort of if she feels like it's more comfortable time inquiring like, oh, what happened to him? Um, and just trying to get that information. And, and while I'm doing that, can I use my eye for detail to look for like any specific clues about her that I can like pick up or try to like pick apart as to what might be affecting this version of her? Okay. Uh, um, I'm looking for like clues, I guess. It's, it's basically says to make an investigation check to uncover or decipher clues. All right. Uh, well, with what Kane picked up and what you're looking at, you're pretty sure you're just interacting with a version of Elsa mm -hmm. that is from a specific point in time. And okay. this version has these memories mm. and doesn't, can't see into their own future. Mm. But she does talk about her, her husband, Fred, and that they built that theater together and how much joy it was, and how often she performed there once it was built, hmm. and the life they had there, and she mentions, uh, and she just starts going on. It's like someone didn't ask her about her husband, just about his art, and so you might be the first one in a while who actually wanted to kind of know the person, mm -hmm. and uh, she gets into this dance, and she describes oh. the special dance that they did together. Hmm. And it, it's the dance that you just saw. That it does sound beautiful and special. Um, have you danced like that since? I mean, we just danced, but did you dance? Oh, there's no other dance like that one. We could try. Might help you. You would have to be my husband, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm a very quick study, and I'll hold out my hand. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You've been kind. But the memory of the dance 
it, it won't be exactly the same, you understand, as you're just not him. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you wish. To making new memories, and I'll just, like, help her up. Because I assume we were sitting and talking, not just standing the whole time. Yeah. I'll also activate my boots as motor climbing, so I could be a little lighter on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you begin. Uh, first, make me a make me a, a history check. Let's see how you're remembering this. Okay. Um, could be history. Um, fourteen again. Okay, you're not doing bad. Uh, now make me a performance check. The history check lets you make the performance check to see how well you're actually keeping up on your feet. Uh, 18 minus 1, 17. 17. All right. You're doing pretty good. You're keeping up. And you're doing the movements as best you can. And you realize some of these movements were also based around his height. Hmm. Which, was he tall, short? He was tall. He was, he was at least 6'6". Six, six. Oh, hey, we're about the same then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, seeing that... Molly's trying to dance again with Elsa. Can Kane just like, kind of like tug Satine a little bit? Or Sarissa. <laughs> wow. Okay. I'm not Sarissa. that cool. Hi, Satine. I'm sorry. <laughs> My brain's not working. <sighs> anyway, tug Sarissa a little closer and um, just to keep friend close that isn't feeling great and then start mm. playing the flute again to try and help Molly out. Okay. Okay. Molly, uh, one more roll, performance roll with advantage. Okay, thank you. Now that the music's kicked in again. Okay, 14 minus 1, 13. That was good. 13. Uh, yeah. You're having a little trouble at this point, but you're not failing. So you're, you're okay. doing, doing okay. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, clearly... She's the professional of the two of us. <laughs> we'll just kind of chuckle about that. They'll be like, yeah, I'm not as good. I'm trying to do my best. She smiles at you when it's sort of that encouraging, like, you're doing well for what <laughs> for what you know uh, and seem to be mm -hmm. doing. Yeah. You know, two steps forward, one steps back. Tiny foxtrot. And then I'll just kind of keep dancing. <laughs> and, uh... As you're doing this, I need everyone to make another intelligence saving throw. Okay. Ooh, uh oh. I'm currently standing at a nine, unless Kane is a little closer and then it becomes a 12, but right now a nine. 19 plus five. Okay. Wow. The rest is fine. Kane? You're muted. I got another nat 20, and I would assume that Kane would have moved closer to Molly for the mat the music. So, okay, so plus 12. Three. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, that's still not enough. Oh. Molly? Mm hmm Since you were trying to take Fred's place, that name seems familiar. It almost seems right to you. Hmm. Well, uh, but you're kind of holding two thoughts in your head that you're Molly and you might oh. also be Fred. That is confusing, but also okay. Uh, <laughs> you're pretty sure you're still Molly, though. Mm. But Fred sounds appealing. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah, I can see that. Just keep dancing all night. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Is there a picture of Fred anywhere in this gallery? Yes, there is. Okay. If if I notice Molly like floundering a little bit, I will ask if she would prefer I take over and I can actually turn into Fred. 
You're asking Changeling. Molly or are you asking yeah. the lady? Oh, um, no, I'm asking Molly. Yeah, I, I think she kind of like move like a bird ruffling feathers and just, you know, I think that might be a good thing. I am um, getting very confused and just sort of like excuse myself <laughs> and like wander off to Vera, or Vera, I'm sorry, I'm doing it now. It's a cane, shaking my head. Just try to figure it out. Get back in my headspace. Okay, so Sarissa will shift into Fred. All right. Do you explain you're doing this before you do it, or do you just do it and approach? No, uh, just do it. And uh, as you dance, and do you try to just sort of cut in as Fred as you were talking? Okay, give yeah. me a performance check then. Uh, with advantage if there's still flute music going and you've kind of observed the dance. So. Ooh, nat 20 plus 2. All right. So, yeah, she smiles and uh, takes your hand and you get the sense that she knows it's not really her husband, but uh, she's still delighted by by this and continues on and uh as you're dancing the whole place aches Oof. okay everyone okay. elsa and everyone who's naturally part of this memory seems unaffected by the shaking but you definitely feel it. interesting Are there any pills or art supplies of any kind, like, about? No, you're just sort of in a gallery space. And we have, we don't have our stuff with us, right? Right. And there's drinks, there's hors d'oeuvres, mm. but you don't really have your stuff. Okay. Is there a painting that's sort of lower to the ground, like within, say, touching height? I mean, they were flipping this to look under the back, but is like one a whole canvas close enough to the ground that you could essentially put something yes. on it? Okay. Um, I would like to take some wine, and and with like Kane's assistance, or if if they have any fine line skills, I'm trying to basically draw a portrait of Lucian with like out just line art basically with this wine so like dip a finger in and just sort of slowly make the lines on this blanked out canvas that should be painted oh you go for a blanked out canvas well yeah because i don't if there's already something on it i don't i don't know if putting a face on th there's no painting that looks like lucian but without a face is there no okay yeah i'll go for one the of the moment more you touch ones. the canvas yeah you're suddenly in a space surrounded by white Oh. And you both no. haven't seen Molly in a minute or uh -oh. so. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so Kane is watching Sarissa Fred dance with Elsa. Molly is gone. That means Kane's impulse control is gone because both of them are doing other things. Oh no. Time to do a cane thing. Um, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, cane is going to look at all of the paintings and try to see. I suppose which one would be the newest one, but which one would be closest to the time of the Elsa that they know, in a sense. Like, that kind of history. So, describe this to me again, what you're looking for. Something, a painting that would be perhaps the last one that was done, the, the most recent one that was created, the one that's closest to the time that they knew Elsa. Okay. Uh, 
most of the time that you knew else. Yeah, the it seems to be one of the larger ones of the theater. Mm -hmm. And the curtains, the it's almost the scene that you were in not too long ago, except there's nobody there. It's just of the space itself. Mm -hmm. Molly, as you're in this space, you look, and you are flaking away. And below your skin, you see metal and components. This is very bad. Not now. I'm just going to grab the hand and cover it. It's, do I see it? It's just all white. There's no opening behind me, no nothing, right? Correct. Uh, am I still in finery or am I in my stuff? You are in your clothing. I will at least draw my daggers then and see if I could find anything to cut or destroy, fight my way out of here. Like, this is not happening. All right. So, tell me about your dagger. Uh, so, I have a very special spirit dagger, um, which I think might be empty right now. But it's basically, dagger is a weird term because it's really the length of her forearm with an intricately curved blade and then like three, four, four gems on the hilts that can light and fill um, with certain attacks. Uh, okay, and what are you doing with your dagger? I would like to channel some of my life essence into it like I would when I'm attacking. Okay. Because this isn't, this is someone else's existence really and I'm trying to bring myself into it to control it to like snap me back okay so, so i'm gonna yeah you uh you take uh three points of damage okay as you feed your dagger essentially mm. and kane what are you doing i'm gonna take note of where this canvas is mm-hmm so that I remember it. And then I'm going to look around. And how many blank canvases were there? Uh, completely blank that you can see. There's at least five. And give me a perception check as you look at these. Sure thing. Twelve. All right. On one, you see it's small. You almost miss it. But you see what looks to be a small figure of Molly. Do I have my umbrella sword? And it's moving. You do not. I do not. Do I see any paintbrushes anywhere? No. Okay. This complicates things. Kane is not the one who knows how magic works. Kane is going to go attempt to cut into the dance with Sarissa and go, Sarissa, Molly's in the painting. Molly's in the painting. Help. D Hello, Elsa. I would like to cut in and dance with you. You're such a fantastic dancer. <laughs> He's like, oh, so many. All right. <laughs> Your talent yeah. deserves to be celebrated. And oh. uh, you can roll a performance check as well if you want to dance. <laughs> yep. Okay. With no music, because now I'm dancing, yep. not doing music. <laughs> no advantage, Thanks. just... Okay, okay, okay. That could have gone a lot worse. That could have gone much, much worse. Um, oh, that could have gone way worse. That's a dirty 20. All right. Nice. You're keeping up rather well. Larissa, what are you doing? Well, I guess she will 
uh, switch back into her own form. Um, and then she's going to go where Kane pointed out that Molly is in the painting. You see a very small version of Molly. He's in there. And Molly, as you continue to move about, more of you is flaking away, and there's more <sighs> sort of... You're seeing metal and gear underneath. Just trying not to panic. <laughs> um, and just, yeah, pulling, like, her, her sleeve down. Like, no, no, not now. I need more time. And try to, like, find a way out. Okay, Sarissa? Okay. If I call out to Molly, can she hear me? No. No. You you say Molly's okay. name, there seems to be no reaction. Molly, you do not hear anything. Hmm. Okay. Can I... If I try to, like... <laughs> This is going to sound bizarre. If I try to, like, grab her off the painting, can I? <laughs> as soon as you touch the canvas, you are in the same oh, no. white blank space. <laughs> oh, no. Molly. Fantastic. Kane, you look around. Neither of your friends are here. Oh, it, Molly. Hello. Oh. No, oh, I don't. This is bad. Um, don't. And then she just, yeah, very trying to pull her cloak like over herself. We and need Sarissa, to get out. As you're in here, it's a view kind of flake away. Well. Oh, that's going to get weird. Just small little like flakes. Mm -hmm. I don't like it here. No. Can we leave now? I would very much like that. Kane? You know how. What do you do? <laughs> Kane is not super smart. K K Kane tries, but good, good golly. Um, Kane, help. <laughs> Kane is going to take Elsa to the painting where Sarissa and Molly are and point at them and go, My friends got trapped in this painting here. Because we're in your memories right now. This is all your hall of memories. She looks at the... We're not really at this. She looks at this canvas and get the sense she's describing what should be here, but suddenly her mouth just kind of fuzzes out and you don't hear the, any words come from it. And uh, after a bit, she's done and... She doesn't seem to notice your friends in this space or anything, and she just seemed to take a couple minutes describing to you the what the painting was and what it meant to her. But there were no I words for it. Truth. Okay. So it's a charisma saving throw. Yep. Same thing happens. From her? She... If if you ask her again mm -hmm. to say it. Same, you get you get the sort of same thing. It takes a little longer. Maybe she's adding extra details somewhere. But again, there's nothing that comes out of her mouth because it's just fuzz. There's nothing there. Hmm. I need you to wake up, Elsa. This is your memories. You're not really here. We need the, we need you to wake up and see us. We're here to help. We need your help. She looks at you strangely. I'm where I need to be. You're not where you need to be right now. And your son needs your help. <laughs> My friends now need your help. I need your help. Well, you seem a bit confused, but I'm how not confused. could I help you? What, it, what is it? By remembering who you are. I... And remembering further than this. I am who. What year is it? Oh, this is at least 30 years ago. 
Yeah. Kane is going to say what the year is now. He's like, I suppose I've heard of temporal magic before. I... We're in your memories. We're in your mind. You seem to be here with me at a museum. The museum is your is mind. Is this a philosophical thing? Are we conceptualizing kind something? Of. It's kind of a philosophical I mean, because thing, because we literally, are both this museum here. is your mind. We are both here. I see you. You are in my head in that instance, but... I, my friends are now trapped in this painting. This painting is not the way that you see it. I need your help to get them out. I don't know how I can help you. It, and she goes to explain the painting again and what she sees and then nothing. This is bad. Have her touch the painting. Spooky ghost advice. Yeah, Kane <laughs> kind of would do that. Kane would nudge her against the painting so she touches it. Nothing happens. What? Hmm. Kane holds on to her and then touches the painting. You're in the space of white with your friends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She didn't come with me? Nope. That didn't work. That really didn't work. And as you're in here... Piece of you flake off. Molly, little bits of your shoulder, neck up here are kind of flaking. You, you feel the inside of you kind of clicking and clacking. Don't, don't look. This is fine. Um, can I? That's just white. I don't know if we make art if we can get out like if i can cut myself to make color in a white space like any we, anything to escape we have our stuff yes i would like the umbrella sword to turn into a paintbrush okay make a constitution saving throw you got it um not great 12 well, okay. You take uh, four points of damage as you will it into a paintbrush. Mm -hmm. You have a paintbrush. I do have a paintbrush. It's still an umbrella, uh, and it's just the end that has kind of the, you know, horse hairs or whatever your paintbrush is made out of at the end of it. Just. Um, I'm going to take the paintbrush and then take my tinderbox and take any ashes from that and the charcoal mm -hmm. and try and paint a door. You paint a door. Okay. Can I open the door? Yes. <laughs> We're in Looney Tunes. Okay. We are. <laughs> We truly are! I love it. And uh, as you're doing this, more of all of you is flaking <sighs> off, increasing. The, the speed of it is... If a door appears, I'm <laughs> pulling my head up and running through it. I Yeah, through the door. All right. Everyone goes through the door. Hmm. And... It's like you're, if you had ever experienced something as being shot of a, out of a cannon, this is probably uh. the closest you're getting to it. As you just <laughs> feel yourselves travel, travel, and I need everyone to make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> and it looks like Sarissa has disadvantage. Thanks to Fen. I do. Boo. Oh. All right. Well, that's okay. I still got a 16. 11. Constitution, you said? Mm -hmm. Oh, don't forget you get plus three for being near me. 
Mm. Yeah, that's uh, it's not gonna do it. So I got uh, nineteen. Got a one plus two, so three plus three is six. So. Okay. Uh. <laughs> oh. Eleven, six, and then success. Mm. Yep. Having a rough moment. Dear Lord Humongous, <laughs> those jokes <laughs> are ridiculous. <laughs> As a horse trainer, I feel like I need to be offended. <laughs> but I can't, because they're really good. Yeah. <laughs> My main forte, like, when are you ever going to come up with that? I never would have come up with that. Like, goodness uh, gracious. Amazing. So, as you pop out of the head, if you will, and into your own bodies, once again, uh, Rissa and Molly, you take six points of damage. Okay. Ow. It was a little rough uh, mm. coming out. Yeah. That's a little, it's going to leave a mark. Oh. Wait, but Sarissa did really well on the save. I failed it. Oh, uh, sorry, then Kane. I was going to say. Anne. I'm sorry. I, I mixed up who had the save, so it would be Kane and Molly then. Yeah. Okay. I was very confused. Okay. <laughs> oh, that did not work at all. But you're back in a room. Lucian's there. His mom's there. They're both in their wheelchairs. Oh, the, we're out, out. The bowls of pudding are empty. Hmm. I think we need a new tactic. I wonder. Uh, I wonder if it had something to do with that dance. And uh, Lucian looks at you all as you snap into consciousness, and you're out. And well, it did uh, not go well. Oh no! Oh no! We can't do that again. No, would we want to? Um. Honestly, I think it had something to do with that dance. A dance. And that, as you mentioned, a dance, it, uh, mom smiles at the just the word dance and makes no other reaction. but And kind of sways her head a little bit back and forth. Elsa, do you remember the dance you used to do with Fred? She just smiles at you and Lucian's like, Fred? It's, who's Fred? And uh, she turns her head. Oh, he, he was my first husband. I, I just, and she's kind of struggling with words that didn't talk about much once met your father. Obviously meant a great deal to you, though. Fred was wonderful. Hmm. Lucian, the problem is somehow we ended up with a version of your mother's memories that was before you existed and before she was Elsa Tinsdale Forthright. So the the version of your mother inside of her head that we met didn't have the memories that we needed to access and we tried jogging those memories and then it didn't work and then we all got trapped into a painting and I had to paint our way out. Interesting. Um, well, maybe it did. Uh, the... Just tell me what you saw in there. Maybe, maybe it is something in there. The way uh, Mother made this spell that put you in there was mm, very specific to something within her. With, with the so, theater? What about the theater? Perhaps. But there's a lot of theaters in Waterdeep. 
No, the theater she built with Fred. And Lucian doesn't <laughs> seem to <laughs> know one. Hmm. Hmm. If we could find that, then perhaps uh, we find uh, the key? No, that wouldn't Maybe make sense. Dance it, you had to have seen something. Something happened in there that I mean, it's in her notes. That that's how we she, do this. That's how we. There, is there a painting of your mother somewhere in your place of her with a bunch you, of pages, uh, or in the museum still? Maybe. No, I, I and I don't know about this it, museum either. If I'm familiar with it, I could probably tell him. Yeah, you can tell him the name of the museum, and he knows where that museum is, but. He yeah. just hasn't gone there. Yeah. There's a lot of things to do in Waterdeep. That painting and a few others of her, but always of the theater and dancing and art were the most prevalent things in that moment. And if she chose to send us there to see them dancing on stage, this particular dance that they always danced. Dancing. Either the theater is significant or the dance is significant. Or both. Uh, Would the thing that unlocks whatever you need be a dance steps? It might be, because oh it, it's, I mean, it's a lock in a place, and we have to do mm. something around that place, some sort of ritual that it could very well be encoded with the dance. So if you can then, tell me what, what it was, how, how the steps work, perhaps, that that's the key to it. I think it would be better if we just did the dance ourselves. That's why we don't mistakenly, like, describe it wrong. We each took a turn dancing with Elsa, so we each know the dance. And we each mm -hmm. saw it with her and Fred. Okay. Um, well, when, what we know is once the thing starts, whoever is doing it has to be the people to complete it. You can't cut in with each other. You can't do anything it will have to be yeah that does make sense it would take a pair but it will take a pair and once you start you can't switch out hmm. that's fine that makes sense so i mean if only you remember part of the dance only you remember part of the dance and then it would take both of you to get into it, it that's not going to work uh both will have to do the we could this dance Perfect. So we practice here, and then we go do the real thing. Molly, I think it should be you and I. I agree. I, I think that would work. I Not much of a performer, but I am quick on my feet. Yes, music is helpful. Yes. For timing. Hmm. Do I, as I'm kind of like quietly look under my cloak am mm. i fine yes or do i still see okay great Whew. Get nightmare fuel over great <laughs> <laughs> yep i feel i feel much i must much less odd we could do that uh we could draw out the steps rehearse and then go to the place i I don't know if we should go to the theater. I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, you can visit the theater, but the lock is in the manor, so you would have to come with me to the manor. Yeah, I, I think okay. the manor is the place. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So I think we'll do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, just let me get my bag and... Lucian goes over to his bag, grabs it up, says, and he says his goodbyes to his mom and kisses her on her forehead and says he'll be back in, in a couple days. And she just nods and smiles and pats, pats his hand. I'm going to uh, go to, like, say goodbye to her also and take her hand just like I did in the memory to, like, gives me, like, thanks for the dance and just kind of leave. 
She, as you do this, she smiles at you, and there's a flash of insight or memory as if she remembers that now, and hmm. just kind of smiles and nods at you. I will be back for that pudding, and then <laughs> <laughs> slip out of the room. All right. Uh, so... You walk out, and as you leave the room, uh, on the window you you see two other people scrambling up the building, probably another race to climb to the top of the uh, retirement home. And you proceed out, and there are still wheelchair races going on in the distance. The two old guys who uh, were sort of berating you before are still on their bench, holding their hands. Hmm. Oh. If I don't fall apart in my old age, I want to retire here. <laughs> <laughs> there are two people fencing. Hmm. It's like, I feel like I almost need to insight this check, but or like inside this place, because I feel like there's like a weird sub level to like it, just seems too great. And I, <laughs> it probably is, but everything tries to eat us or hurt us. So I'm really confused, but a genuinely nice place. <laughs> Sometimes there's good in the world. <laughs> Sometimes. And you proceed out, and uh, Lucian's with you, and he's in the combat wheelchair going along. He's mm. Sometimes he's going faster than what you can walk, and he, he forgets himself for a minute. He's like, oh, sorry. And he slows down yeah. a bit so he can keep up. Thanks. We appreciate your um, confidence in us, your trust to let us with your mother like that means a lot. Yes, well, you've been very good to me and doing as much as we had and putting yourselves at risk so mm. often. And uh, I thought I could trust you with something personal like this. So uh, thank you for everything you've done up to this point. And uh, he can continue on the way to uh, large manor house. Mm. It takes about a half hour or so to walk there. Uh, there's uh, and Molly. The this is obviously the Tinsdale forthright manor house as you were describing it. Except the pieces <laughs> you were messing up are the proper pieces. <laughs> <laughs> No one has a baby elephant statue in their front yard. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful home. Yeah. Great, isn't it? We're going in the back way. And he oh. <laughs> wheels oh, around. Okay. <laughs> he uh, wheels inside the gate. And instead of approaching the front door, he sort of takes a bit off to the left. Are, are we not supposed to be here? We can be here. It's more just avoiding certain people. Uh, if anyone is mean to you, Lucian, I will punch them in the face. Oh, that that will just get you a fine in Waterdeep. Um, That's okay. Hmm. Uh, right. You're worth uh, a fine. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, and he goes around he goes around a gate, and then there's another gate, he Pulls out the key, unlocks it, and you go through that, and there's the side entrance, and he does a curious knock on the door. Hmm. And it's sort of out of rhythm of anything. You know, it's not like shaving a haircut or anything. Hmm. It's just a knock, and then it, it's very awkward. But someone on the inside opens the door. And you see someone 
dressed very fine, apparently a butler of some kind. And he's like, good to see you, sir. And he holds the door open. Quietly go inside. And uh, you go in. And the first thing, you're in a kitchen. And it's huge. This kitchen is the entire size of my bedroom. Imagine how many loaves of bread I could make in here. You could fit many. two full dining room tables in here. If there weren't ovens and various other tables in here for cutting and mixing and everything like that. Hmm. Well, we knew he was well to do. This <laughs> the trappings of that. And Lucian continues through as if this is everyday normal for him. We will follow. Mm -hmm. All right. He's like, okay, I'm for stairs. And he gets up out of his wheelchair, <clears throat> puts it to the side, and the butler seems to push it into this little closet on the side and kind of it, it's difficult to shove in as it's sort of a side utility closet but he hides it in there it's like okay we go up these stairs down all to the left we take a right we go down that hall and then another right and the door will be the fifth one on the left okay and so he with uh uh, grasping his leg, he uh, gets up his stairs, and he's like, oh, I've been sitting a little too long. And he, hmm. he manages it, and it's a little easier for him as he keeps going up his, you know, his, his false leg thudding against the step a bit as it lands. But apparently it's not really echoing throughout to alert anyone or anything like that. Hmm. And as you go through and up the steps and down the halls, you occasionally see a maid or two here and there with doors wide open, almost obscuring the visual distance if someone were to come the other way for you mm -hmm. as you go through, or they have a cleaning cart just in the way, or they're just standing in certain spots. Nice. I like this setup a lot. <laughs> as perhaps the footfalls of Lucian sounded familiar to them and they sprung into a certain pattern when they heard them. Huh. And so uh, we continue down the hall and you go into this room and it's dusty in this room. It was once a study, there are books along the walls. Uh, there is a nice back window to let in some light. Though mostly it would seem to be positioned to let in moonlight more than sunlight. That's pretty. And uh, in the middle of the floor is this intricate pattern. And it's circular, and there's uh, five concentric circles all within this one base. Huh. It's like, okay, as soon as you step on that space, that's the lock. It begins. And Lucian, uh, Lucian goes uh, behind a desk there and pulls a chair out for himself and sits down. There are, uh, there's a couple chairs over there if you, if whoever wants to sit needs to sit. Kane will sit and pull out the flute so that as soon as Sarissa and Molly are ready to start dancing, they can play the music to try and help that way. Okay. 
So we should practice not on the circles first. <laughs> so assume, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there, there is room in here to practice. Okay. Okay. It, it's not going to be in the center of the room, or you know, you don't want to hit the outside of any of the circles. But there's enough room to kind of perform the steps, not as fully as you would if you were in the center, but you can mm -hmm. you can kind of get in and practice a little squished practice as you would. Okay. So Elsa's height. Was she about Cyrus's height? Like in the memory, I suppose? Yes. Okay. okay. And I'm about Fred's height, so we can exchange. We could just stay in that formation then. Yep. That works. Okay. So, yeah, we just okay. put our heads together and try to map out the, so the dance. So, as you practice, make a performance check, a practice performance check. Okay. <laughs> I had any kind of thing that makes me better at that. Does my fl does the flute help at all? Not for the practice. Okay. But this uh, is a eight minus one. It's a seven. That is a sixteen. Okay. Uh, Sarissa's doing a little better at this than you are, Molly. Mm-hmm. And so, you will begin it, but the uh, advantage King gives to you, Molly, would be disadvantage, so you're just going to do a straight roll, or Sarissa okay. will roll on advantage. Okay. Cool. Um... When you go to actually do this, and tell me when that is, please. So I got a 19. Oh, okay, we're going. Okay, uh, 18 minus one, 17. 17. Nice. All right. You start the dance, the flute music, and as you're moving, the circles begin to move. And then they, one snaps into place. Another snaps into place. Another performance check, this time with advantage to you both. Okay. Okay. 19. 17 minus 1, 16. Okay. You're both still doing fine. A couple more of the circles lock into place. One more check with advantage. Now that you're in this rhythm, you got the flute music going, everything's going well. Nat 20 plus one. All right. Uh, 14. All right. Molly, you almost miss a step, but with the nat 20, mm. Sarissa kind of leads you in the correct position. And the final bit cool. naps into place. And the bookcase clicks open and separates in half. Hmm. That's exciting. Is a Lucian stands. That that was impressive. Thank you. I should find find out more about this Fred fellow. I don't know anything about him. Uh and he walks over, and he finishes peeling the bookcases apart. We can actually tell him his last name, right? It was Monroe? Yes. Mm. Red Monroe. Thank you. Hey. Welcome. Appreciate that. It was important to Mom. It was a, it'd be someone important to me and the family. Mm. <sighs> Though I might be the only one who actually cares. Uh, and he, uh, he looks inside and he pulls out a note and, uh, 
a case. And he wanders back over to the desk. And he reads the note. Uh, he smiles. And he opens up the case. There's a document inside. Reads it over. Okay, this is for the land. This is the key. And he pulls out what looks like a small cylinder of some type. And I have no idea what this is. Fascinating. I have to go look. And he looks over to you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next time you get paid at the end of the week, uh, expect a good bonus. Uh, this has earned us quite a bit of money. Or at least... Uh, me and my business interests, that's going to get sticky with the family, but I think now that the paperwork is mine, I can control the funding mm. a little more and make sure mom stays as good as she can or as long as she can. You're a good son. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, being... Hearing that, even being adopted into the family means a lot. Oh, uh, when you're, when some of your family doesn't really even consider you a brother or a son. Hmm. Yes, but your mother know. chose you. Yeah. She wanted you. So what they think doesn't really matter. What she thinks does and what you think does. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for that. And he smiles they at you. Decide, if they decide they don't want you as a brother, they're missing out. I like to think so. And he stands up. All right. Well, I need to go take care of this, so you can... The afternoon and night are yours, I suppose. I'm glad we could help, Lucian. And uh, as you head back down the stairs, uh, the the maids and the butlers are still in positions, though they seem to have rotated uh, around and seem to be doing other duties. They're still in the same spots they were to block view, as it were, and go back down and go back outside. And uh, oh. Lucian... Uh, takes off his wheelchair, bids you adieu. And what would you like to do? Hmm. Well, it's kind of been a short day, but a weirdly tiring day. Incredibly. How far would we be from that museum or the theater? Uh, that's going to be about an hour walk. Okay. The museum. Uh, I think Molly would like to go that way. Like maybe before she leaves the estate. I assume this place has gardens. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'd like to snag a couple of pretty flowers. Yep. Easily done. Okay. And then she's going to go to the museum to see if she can find those paintings. Yeah. Go to the museum. And did you name the museum? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I got sucked into a painting and it got scary. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Waterdeep's Museum of Fine Arts and Craftsmanship. There you go. All right. That works. So you go to that, usually known by whatever long acronym that comes out to be. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, uh, one moment. Okay, and yeah, you find the museum, you go in, it's, you have about an hour before closing time, uh, you go, you find the Fred and Nelson Row Wing, and you see all of the paintings, and the space is exactly as the memory showed, except... You see all of Fred's work. 
will take time to look at them. And then is there one of him and her or him separately from her? Like a self-portrait? There are both, yes. There are both. Okay. Uh, and then there's the one of her with the pages. Yeah, that, that seems to have center stage. Yeah. Uh, I'll leave a flower at the bottom of his portrait and the one at uh, at hers. Okay. Yeah. Well, give yourself an inspiration. Oh, thanks. I'm just kind of sit there for a while, just looking at the, the one of them together for a bit, just kind of studying it. And they are up on stage, and it's probably as close to a painting of the dance you just performed hmm. as, you know, real life matching a painting as you'll get. It's perfect. And she'll like leave like we're like one minute right before it's closing. Just okay. Just slip out quietly. <laughs> yeah. Larissa and Kane, what would you like to do? Did you go to the museum as well during this time or? Yeah. So yeah. Larissa would have gone with. Um, okay. So you each have... kind of take your turns and going in and out and as Molly's sitting there and admiring everything going around. Yeah. Um, at the painting of Fred and Elsa together, Kane's going to take a scrap of parchment out of their map book, mm -hmm. one of the blank ones that they haven't drawn a map on yet. And they're just going to like dot out like a couple of a couple of steps of the dance on it as though in a path and then write um the path to memories and the path to love and then just stick it behind the painting all right you get an inspiration as well hmm. cool <laughs> kane just wanted to do something nice because hmm. that was very bittersweet Larissa, would you like to do anything? She's just going to stare at the painting a bit. All right. And you leave, and everyone headed back to the manor. Your house manor, <laughs> Troll Skull Alley yeah. manor. <laughs> yeah. Troll Skull Alley, yeah. All right. Yeah. And you go back there. S three is there. Actually, Sarissa is going mm -hmm. to uh, go see Morning Glory. Okay. You Just can visit Morning Glory. Easy enough. Go check up on her and maybe groom her a bit. Maybe even take her out for a ride. Just to I don't know, clear her head a bit. Okay. You do that. It's refreshing. You you feel better about things and. Day, day was good. You did good today. You take your ride. And uh, anything else no one wants to do? I think, yeah, I'll go just take care of stuff. Probably the, the dishes we didn't finish earlier in the day. Just start scrubbing them and then all of a sudden like put one down really heavy. Be like, rocks! And like, <laughs> just like, <laughs> <completely> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, R Rox wasn't there when you went into the memory. <laughs> and he wasn't there when you left. <laughs> Uh-oh. Fortunately, there's a note on the door to his room. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Apologizing that he had to leave for a bit. <laughs> it describes something we'll have Adam tell you about later, because he'll have to make it all up. So... <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So you all get a long rest, a full night's sleep. And uh, you wake up in the morning, 
And there's mm -hmm. still two more case files on the table. More to do. So there was helping death, and there was ghost ship. Hmm. Sarissa definitely wants to help death. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kane's good either way. Molly the tiebreaker. Yeah, great. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean we could always split the party. <laughs> That'd be like one and two. <laughs> rocks is gone. <laughs> no, uh I think she will choose to help death just because the last time that's what Sarissa wanted to do originally. And we went and did this instead. And so just like this time, we will do the thing you would like to do. <laughs> I'll probably get to stab something, which I'm way better at. And so <laughs> <laughs> it'll all work out. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. He wants us to organize his library. It's, who knows? <laughs> all right. just start singing Oh Death. <gasps> Then he could have the Dewey Death Roll oh, system. Oh, death. <laughs> oh, death. All right. And you, uh, and I'm cutting you off before copyrights. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so you, there's a meeting spot. Hmm. Hmm. And you, is there anything you want to collect? Anything different you want to get out of the house before you leave? Before you hit this meeting spot? What, Just outside okay. the town. What, what was in the file? Uh, that death is needing help with a... Troublesome dimension seems something is still lingering that's blocking him and or her, depending on how you see them at the moment, uh, yeah. or neither. Uh, okay. And yeah, that's all it says. And there's a location, and that doesn't over leave her Okay. I'll return the uh memory scroll thing that Molly signed out because we didn't end up using it. Okay. I don't really know what best to bring to alternate dimension shenanigans. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, do, 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 Yeah. I think Sarissa's good. All right. I think she might bring S3 with just because, you know, you never know what S3 is going to do in another dimension. Oh. Okay. That's fair as well. <laughs> no, I so, regret my choice. S3. <laughs> <laughs> S3 grabs a travel size of cereal and bang, <laughs> takes it, you know, up in her arm. <laughs> wanders over to you and is <laughs> like up <laughs> and she sort of gets uh. in the backpack and <laughs> ducks in. <laughs> yeah, she'll uh, Sarissa will wear like a scarf thing so that S3 can just sit here. <laughs> hmm. And for those new to the stream, S3 is a rag doll that happens to have some life in it. But some nice, possibly faded, painted smile. Faye and or something else. <laughs> something else. Uh. It eats a lot of cereal. <laughs> even though yeah. its mouth doesn't open and it doesn't choose anything. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? Hmm. Molly will also leave a note for Rox on top of his note on his own door. Okay. It says, gone to help death. What could go wrong? <laughs> uh, XOXO, Molly. 
All right. And uh, you go <laughs> to it. this spot where you're to meet death. And as usual, in the very Looney Tunes cartoon manner, death sort of unrolls and their cloak comes down and their top comes up and their skeletal head appears, their hands elongate with the scythe again. Eight, ten feet tall. Oh, you're here. Of course. You mean to help then, or is there something I'm missing in your purpose? No, we're here to help. All right, well, can you go? And he makes a slash with his sickle, and a oh. portal opens in front of you. Good. More plane shifting. I don't know what will happen, but it's a kind of a nuisance. So, take care of it. What exactly is the nuisance? That place. The whole the place. place? Like the place itself. There's something there. That, I don't know. Maybe it needs fixing like the last time you were in a portal, or... I have no idea. Well... I just know it's... blocking me. Hmm. Seems Off to be we residual go, from... the orbs. Okay. Right, possible. Um, alright. Well, Sarissa will walk in. Kane's riding on her heels. Alright. Yeah, no, I need something to get back in case we can't find this thing. Something is wrong. It's very vague. And I hold on my hand. Can I have like a scroll or a portal key in case we can't find whatever this is? Do we call you? Because I can't eliminate an entire world just to appease you. Uh, not really <laughs> eliminating a... Well, perhaps. You don't know what's wrong with it. I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> just re it with the hand. <laughs> and I tell you what. And he reaches into themselves Oof. and uh like just like a void pulls out mm. the key like mm, try this just Thank uh you. though there's no door just uh position it like you would put a key in a keyhole and give it a turn and okay. i don't know what will happen in there with it but it might make its intended purpose. It might not. Hmm. Phenomenal. Wonderful. Uh, well, I am going to go after my friends to try to complete my purpose, but I might not. And I will just turn around and go and just like, <laughs> unimpressed with death. <laughs> <laughs> just grumbling about a mystery key <laughs> under my breath. <laughs> So, <laughs> as you go in, it it's just dark around you, blackness. Mm. You don't see anything, even though it was with dark vision. There's nothing to look at. Oh, and eventually, your eyes open and start hearing a rumbling as though you're on tracks. And, uh... You uh, occasionally hear a loud whistle. And as you open your eyes and sort of take stock of yourselves, you notice something about yourselves that Cain, you... Uh, seem to be, you have, well, you have a tail, and you're green, and you have segmented eyes, and you have flippers. Though you can stand on two legs, you have legs, you fancy yourself a gecko. Guys! At this point, Larissa, you... You lick your own eyeball. <laughs> yes! 
You can. Inside the bug. Larissa, you seem to have the legs of a bird and white feathers. That. Yeah. Plumage. Yeah. And you are the white raven. You have a long beak. Oh. Ooh. Molly, ah. you have a ring tail. It is red. Uh -huh. You are a red panda. Oh my this god, is my this best is so life. cute! <laughs> this is so cute! Oh my god. And you're all... A gecko, a white raven, and a red panda walk into a bar. <laughs> and you all stand direct and you seem to be in a train car, if you even know what that is. Mm -hmm. And uh, a friendly dog person walks up and says, uh, Tickets, please. And that's where we'll stop. <gasps> Ooh. Best adventure ever! For today. <laughs> I'm like, Which Gecko! I say, nevermore. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> So, what? <laughs> hey, you chose these animals a long time ago. Um, oh my I did god, what? you did! Oh my god! Yep. I had forgotten. Oh wow! <laughs> I, I asked you once in the Discord if uh, oh, if you wow. were to be what your favorite animals were. And my favorite animal I've, is a horse. At, at or no, what your character's no, favorite animal would be. That. And, I uh, remember that. Oh, I forgot. This is oh what God. you all responded with. <laughs> I forgot. So these that choices so long ago. are yours. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I have no memory of this, but I love it. So was, um, oh let's go around and have our cast do year. outros. Uh, <clears throat> we'll start again with Crystal. Ah, hello, people. My name is Crystal Fear. You can find me at Crystal underscore Fear on Twitter and at Crystal Fear pretty much everywhere else. Uh, holy cow. Um, I am going to be, well, I'm pretty much only here for right now. Um, but on Tuesday night, I will be uh, in the chat for twitch.tv slash the empath theater. Uh, they're currently doing a like three or four shot uh before their next campaign so you can come hang out with me there and talk about the fact that we are now animals hmm. which is awesome okay and uh laurie we're gonna have you do announcements so we're gonna go to vera first then you then you can outro yourself and do the channel announcements please uh so okay. vera Hi, I'm Vera from Vera Says Dragons, just about everywhere on the internet. Um, I'm currently just here because everything else that I'm doing is a work in progress, but we might be actually making some progress now, so you might see some things from me real soon. Um, and just real quick, I'd really, um, I'd like to thank you, DC, for making a character that's partially in a wheelchair and partially out because I am in a wheelchair 30 to 50% of the time, and I'm actually back in it right now due to some complications, and I've been, you know, feeling some kind of way about that. Uh, and so seeing Lucian, and like you just mentioning that they know the pattern of his walk, and I know that my pattern of my walk is very different than another person's, and that was really, um, so thank, thank you for making a character like that. Yeah. It means a lot. Thank See, you. You're going to make me cry. I'm, I'm tr I've been trying not to cry all day, man. I'm having a day. <laughs> but yeah, find me at Vera Says Dragons and see see me here next week. And, you know, maybe I'll have, actually have announcements for projects. Who knows? <laughs> Yay. All right. Lori? Hello. Hey, everybody. My name is Lori, a.k.a. Calamity Jane. You can find me on Twitter at calamity underscore j-a-y-n also on the dnt beyond discord i'm a moderator there pop on by say hello or on the lovely gilding light discord i'm a moderator there as well please sign up if you're not already a member come by say hello we'd love to have you um that's me i'm mostly here i will be here every thursday with the inspectors 
We love you guys. We appreciate you. Come back and see us. Um, and we do have a couple of announcements and then we will do the giveaway. I'm actually just going to close that now. So this is your last call for entries and we'll do our announcements just really quickly. So following the show after us, please tune in for Actor Oki. They will start as soon as we are done. And I believe they're on um, Actor Spokey today, which is really fun to say. So tune in for that. It's our third episode. They'll be starting very, very shortly. And then next week, Tuesday, we have the premiere of She's the Ancient, which is a gender bend Curse of Strahd campaign with Beth the Bard. And that will be at 5 p.m. Pacific. And on Wednesday, we have Angel in the City of Glass with uh, DM Fenway Jones at 3 p.m. Pacific. And that's followed by the finale of The Mystery of Melody at 7 p.m. Pacific. And yeah, we'd love to have you guys again. Tune in for Actor Oki right after us. Um, and uh, tune in too for Sirens and DJ Kenley next week, 8 p.m. Pacific. I believe that's on Fridays. Sorry, TZ. Yeah. All right. And so now we will close that draw. All right. And as that is happening, I've been your DM for today, DC. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram as DC Lasair. That's DC L A S A I R. I produce a bunch of shows on this channel, and I'm starting to produce for other folks as well. So. I'll announce it, follow me on Twitter, and check out what I'm doing. I'd appreciate it. And uh, I also stream on my own channel, and currently going through Mass Effect. So if you enjoy that, and sometimes Hades, depending on the day. Uh, yeah, so come in, check that out. And uh, June 26th, I'm doing a charity game for uh, The Trevor Project. It'll be on twitch.tv slash ttrpgifts. That's T-T-R-P-G-I-F-S. It'll be a game of Honey Heist. So come on in, check that out. That'll be at... Oh, boy. Uh, time oh. zones. 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Uh, so please come in and check those things out. So do we have a winner for the drawing? We do. Our winner this evening of the Kettle Keep Mysteries is... Vancouver by night. Yay, Vancouver by night. Yay, uh, please have your Twitch whispers open. I will whisper you after the show with all the great details. Thanks for stopping in. We appreciate it. Thank you all for watching. Uh, thank you, Gilding Light, Satine Phoenix, Sirenscape, and D&D &D Beyond. So we will see you all next week. Be kind to yourselves, be kind to each other, and have a great evening. Bye. Bye. Bye.